let's start here. Let's start at the top, which is the pros and cons that uh, Joe asked her of SA water buying uh, water from the market uh, and uh, versus Yarra Valley investment uh, in infrastructure and then creating basically uh, uh, savings about that and then those savings being shared with the, uh, with the city. First of all, in relation to SA water buying water from the market, I did catch up with Tony afterwards and corrected him on the, uh, that like to publicly correct, but I will do it now since this is questions come up. Yes, so, and, and I mean our business uh, is in Adelaide, but uh, I'm, I'm reasonably I can be quite critical of the South Australian government, as, uh, as Joe can know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in relation to some of their water reforms. Uh, the, uh, uh, so I'm not protecting the South Australian government here at all, but I'm just telling that what what has actually occurred in uh, South Australia. Uh, when I was a grower in, in uh, Kingston, Kingston and Murray, I was actually a Central Irrigation Trust grower. Central Irrigation Trust was, is uh, really the, the largest uh, group of uh, irrigation in, in South Australia. Nine irrigation districts, uh, thousands of irrigators using their, uh, their infrastructure. We, uh, we modernised uh, one of our infrastructure in the Central Irrigation Trust and that sort of started in the 90s. Uh, and that was actually paid for a third by the farmers a third by the state government and a third by the federal government. And I, I, I got, uh, I got a, for five years, I had to pay extra on my bill as, as, as an irrigator uh, to contribute towards irrigation infrastructure. That was not even my, I was in Kingston Irrigation Trust, we only like had 600 people, or, it wasn't even that, it was 300 farms on that piece of infrastructure. And our piece of infrastructure had been done 10 years ago, 15 years ago. This was actually to modernise Wurrook, it was to modernise uh, uh, Loxton, it was to modernise a few of these other irrigation areas. And we, the whole community, the whole, the whole irrigation community, <coughs> shared the burden of that. The, the, uh, uh, so, a part of that is that there was a lot of channels which were closed and popped. And the, the uh, government actually worked out the savings that were created then in the early 90s when the water was on the money and the minister ended up getting the savings of the water on the water licence, or on, on the minister's water licence. That was held by Persa for many years in, in uh, uh, South Australia. So to start off with, I'd say this is not a true statement because a lot of the, the actual uh, water savings that occurred in South Australia, there was water savings through infrastructure, but it occurred well before the debates that we're currently having. And I paid for some of it to occur, so I know you, you know a lot about things that when you pay for them, you, you sort of, uh, you, you know, it's definitely a fit. So uh, what actually, uh, uh, what happened with that water is that the Living Murray 500 gigalitre um, commitment uh, that, you know, was made to return 500 gigalitres of water to the system, that um, South Australia had, what, a 30, 35 gigalitre uh, uh, amount of water that they had to do as far as the over allocations concerned. That water was saved out of those, uh, uh, out of restructuring those investments was given to the uh, to the federal government as far as their commitment to the Living Murray issue. So, um, so that's, uh, so the pros and cons of SA white water buying water, so that, this water's been given away. I suppose they wouldn't have had to, uh, SA water uh, has been buying water, we understand, through the River Mur uh, and funding it through the River Murray levy, which has been put on every urban water user's account. That's where, where we believe the funding purchases. They have been purchasing water in the temporary water market this year to basically bol bolster up uh, uh, delivery of water to the township of North Sydney and Adelaide. And they've purchased a significant quantity of water, 120, we estimate 120, 130 gigalitres and about 60, 65 million dollars worth of water. It wasn't 11, it was 65 million dollars worth of water approximately that they've purchased uh, to the uh, Gulf Strait. And there has been significant ramifications through the marketplace because of that. Uh, we've seen that, um, uh, as we say, we've done a private report, haven't we? But yeah, it wouldn't be that private if I said it would be <laughs> I'm over at Joe, let's say something about it. We did a, uh, we, we did, we did a, uh, we did a, a, a report that wasn't a top, you know, we, we're not on confidence to say anything about it, but it was, uh, uh, we, uh, it was actually, uh, we looked at 
the quantities of tries that we could look at through and track through the registers, and we actually tracked where their purchases were occurring. And there was, we actually saw there was about a, a, a I think it was about an 18.9 percent uh, increase in the price of temporary water that was occurring. Though I actually paying about 18.9 percent on average above market rates uh, for the temporary water that our that, that lake was purchasing, and when they entered the market and exited the market, we did see these significant shocks coming through the market where the prices went up and went down. And, and I think these I think we need to I think we need to be thinking about how responsibly these uh, how responsibly we uh, we enter the marketplace as as uh, say a group that is responsible for legislating, responsible for operating, and then is respectable it is actually then entering the marketplace that are responsible to operate and legislate. I think we, we, we're not having enough thought about that and what sort of signals that that's sending through to the marketplace, and I think because we could be quite damaging to the marketplace.